Uh, and good morning, everyone. Uh, for the past 25 years, I've been applying the science of wear to the utility industry, a community I've truly enjoyed being a part of. And I know all of you are thinking right now, I do not age. <laughs> However, in July of 2016, I was diagnosed with ALS, and I became a member of a new community. Today, I want to share with you a patient's perspective of how the science of wear can impact the care and community that I'm now a part of. When I was first diagnosed, there were three things I needed to know. Care, cure, and community. Amazingly enough, this information wasn't mapped. So why did I need this information mapped? Because location is everything for the chronically ill. For care, I needed to know the closest clinics, because we'll be visiting these clinics with our highly trained staff several times throughout the year. For a cure, I needed to know the best locations for trials. Now, since ALS has no cure, the best place to start is clinical trials. Once again, location is everything. Most trials require that I live in the area where the trial is being performed. Finally, I needed a community that understood my needs. So I rolled up my sleeves and I said, all right, I've been doing this for 25 years, applying to the utilities. It's the same problem. Locate my assets. Let's figure out how to locate my resources. Let me show you what I did. So I created a, a simple web application that allows you to come in, place the location where you're at. Here we're in building Q. And it goes out within 30 miles and identifies all the clinics within 30 miles of the Esri campus. In fact, here's Loma Linda, the clinic that I attend. Next, it locates all the trials. In fact, there's a trial just down the street that's going on, and I set up the filter to show all trials that are currently in the recruiting process. And then finally, I can see all the support groups that are available in my area. Now, I can always change my search criteria based off of my location and what my location needs are. So, no longer would I have to hunt and peck for this type of information like I did a year ago. By having this information, it helps patients like me have a sense of hope, as well as putting an action plan together. So don't underestimate putting your, this type of information on a map. All right, now that we got through that emotional roller coaster, we're going to switch gears and we're going to talk about the patient care. Now, many of you are familiar with the U.S. National Lab Library of Medicine website. While exploring the site, I came across an interesting article where the researchers used GAIS for spatial analysis of rectal lesions in the human body. Now that everyone's attention, um, the part that I found fascinating was how they documented their approach to mapping the human body. So let's page down to Appendix 1 and see their approach. So in Step 1, you create a table, enter the values of lesion locations. Step 2, convert degrees into coordinates. Step 3, add the data to arc map, and so on. Now, that was cutting-edge research back in 2007. But technology has changed in the way we can document and share our research. We can now use tools like the Jupyter Notebook, which is an open source, browser-based application that lets you create and share documents that contain live code, tables, and now maps using the ArcGIS API for Python. I want to introduce my colleague, Dave Johnson, just an overall, overall good guy, to give you an introduction into the Jupyter Notebook and also show how we documented our research and how to improve clinic access for ALS patients. Dave? Oh, thanks, Pat. That makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Sure Hi, everybody. This is a blank Jupyter notebook. In it, I can type in Python code and view the results interactively. For example, 1 plus 2, press Shift Enter, 3. Or, I just brought ArcGIS into this notebook. It's really that simple. <laughs> Next, I'll log on to my WebGIS. Now, 
This could be ArcGIS Online, or it could be ArcGIS Enterprise. Now I'll add a map. And all that took was just two tiny lines of code. Now I'll search my WebGIS for content related to ALS. So one of these items is a map layer of ALS clinics in the state of California. And I will add them to the map. So that was just a quick introduction into how you can bring the power of ArcGIS into the Jupyter Notebook. Now, I want to bring you back to Pat's research into patient access to ALS clinics that we are documenting in a second notebook. All right, so as a part of this research, we performed analysis into where new ALS clinics can be established to improve patient access. We began by mapping the locations of patients, represented as green dots, that have to drive over 90 minutes to access a clinic. The Central Valley and along the Central Coast, there are a considerable number of patients that have to drive one or two, hour, or two hours or more to access a clinic. To improve clinic access, we created a step to perform network analysis to identify the ideal city to help serve those patients that are outside of that current 90-minute drive time. Here's the step with a block of code that performs the network analysis based on the parameters and data that Dave just added. Now Dave is running the code right now, and the parameters are currently set to find one city that can serve the most patients within a 90-minute drive time. We're going to wait for it. There we go. And here's the table showing the results of our analysis. Now Dave can run the next block of code to display a map that identifies the patients that would be able to access that clinic within 90 miles or 90 minutes. The power of this approach is that it's an interactive document where parameters and data can be changed. For example, let's change the scenario and assume we have funding for two ALS clinics. For that scenario, we change the parameter from one to two cities. We can now see the results in a map showing two new proposed clinic sites and the patients they would serve. So rather than sharing your research methodology as a static document, you can now share them as a living document using the Jupyter Notebook with the ArcGIS API for Python so that others can apply their own data, their own parameters using your spatial analysis methodology. Clapping is okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Finally, remember the original research article, GIS for Spatial Analysis of Rectal Lesions in the Human Body? Who could forget? Well, we got to thinking about how we could use this modern GIS to model the human body. So one of the areas ALS has impacted my body is the use of my hands, specifically my left hand. It's hard to extend and make a fist unlike it is on my right. So as a part of my ongoing therapy, I work with Joyce, who is my occupational therapist. And to help track my progress, Joyce measures my hand and the various degrees in which I can extend and flex my fingers. All this information is then recorded in a spreadsheet. But it's difficult to visualize this information. This got us thinking about how we could use GIS to visualize, how we use GIS to actually visualize 3D cities and maybe we could do the same thing with this information. So we use City Engine, which is an application designed to represent geographic information in 3D. And we can now see the city skyline with a proposed new train station. We can view the station at different angles, including the various station platforms. With the City Engine, we can also look at alternative designs. Now, this design might look a little familiar. It's the design of a hand. In fact, it's my left hand. We took those measurements from Joyce and applied them as city engine rules 
as models in the city of Jin rules, as you can see on the right-hand side of the panel. Now we can go back in time and see the progress I've made. Here's my, ha here's my hand in July when I first started therapy. The next measurement was in August, and the final measurement taken just a few weeks ago. And from this latest measurement, you can see my, how I've improved my ability to grip, which now means I can pull up my own pants. <laughs> Thank you, Joyce. <laughs> now, one of the outcomes of this research project is that it actually helped me stay motivated because it provided me a reminder of the progress I've actually made over the past three months, and also to continue therapy, even despite the challenges that lay before me. And in closing, what's actually kept me moving as well is actually bringing GIS to this community. In fact, a few of my community members are here. Dr. Rosenfeld, if you don't mind standing. Joyce, Kelly, Andrea, all from uh, Lone Linda. I also can't forget Danny and Yvonne, if you wouldn't stand. These are the gentlemen that keep me going to gym every day. and my brother-in-law, who I do not pay, but does provide me great breakfasts every morning. So thank you, Bill. <laughs> so they are like many of you here today, is that your work really does make a difference for patients like me, and thank you.